係咪落緊啊 ？OK。Okay, so this is the high diploma program orientation. So welcome all of you. Uh, I think you should have a uh, you should have listened to our uh, department head uh, to introduce uh, what is building services engineering and uh, what are the teachers here? Uh, who who are the teachers here? And what are our research topics, research areas? So for the high diploma program, I will focus on our curriculum and also um, some policy um, about uh, how how can you graduate from the high diploma program or. Uh, what kind of uh, policy that may affect your progression to the next year. Okay, so I think for the buildings, what is building service engineering? I think I will skip uh, these topics because uh, these are boring topics and uh, you will learn building service engineering anyway very soon. Okay, so let me just skip these slides. Okay, okay, program learning outcomes. Uh, we are now using the outcome based learning. So you have to um, study some of the subjects and each subject will have their uh, learning outcomes. Okay, and then after attaining all the credits, after finishing all the subjects, then you can graduate and when you graduate you should have achieved some program learning outcomes okay so these are the program outcomes like um when you graduate you should be a you, sh you you should have an awareness of health and safety issues related to building service engineering and you should also have an ability to carry out basic design installation commissioning and maintenance of building services systems including HVACR. HVACR is the heating, ventilation, air conditioning, refrigeration system. Okay, so, um, sorry. And the electrical installations, fire services, plumbing and drainage system. So basically these are the building services system. Okay. Okay, some more learning outcomes. So I'm not going to read all these to you, all right? Um, so when you graduate, you should have achieved these outcome, okay? This is the outcome-based learning. And also these, okay? So the standard of the final award is such that it provides exemption from the educational requirement for associate membership of the Hong Kong IE. Okay, so when you graduate, you will be able to achieve the educational requirement for the associate membership of the Hong Kong IE, Hong Kong Gong Ting Si All right. Okay, so our program is accredited by the Hong Kong IE and the CIBSD. Um, so we have attained certain standard to achieve, um, to satisfy the educational requirements of these two institutes. Okay, so this is something important, okay? The program structure. We are using the credit base. So in order to graduate from this program, you need to attain 69 credits plus three industrial center training credits, IC credits. Okay, so I see industrial training or industrial center training. Um, industrial center is a Gong Yip Chong Sum. So for Poly U, we have an industrial center. So um, you have some modules which will uh, attain, uh, which will attend lecture in the industrial center to learn how to use computer software to draw. Okay, to draw some professional drawings like the schematics, the layout plan, um, and, and, and others. And you will also go to the industrial center to do some practical works. Okay, like um, to learn how to, um, how to make some air duct or how to connect some electrical wiring. So these are some practical works. Um, so it should be quite interesting, okay, I would say. Not just learning from the books, doing calculations, but doing the practical work, okay? 
So 69 credits and three credits from the IC training. And the normal period of registration is two years. So it means that if you follow the uh, curriculum and pass all the subjects, then you should be able to graduate within two years. And the maximum period is four years. Um, okay, so I think you, I, I, I should delete this. So the normal period is two years and now we don't have the maximum period of registration. Okay, so you should, uh, you should aim at graduate in two years. And the maximum study load is 21 credits per semester. Okay, so in average, every subject will have around three credits, okay? Three credits for one subject. And the maximum study load is 21 credits. So it means that in each semester, you can study up to seven subjects, okay? Maximum seven subjects, okay? But this is not the recommended study pattern, okay? I will talk to you what is the recommended uh, uh, study pattern later. Okay, subjects are offered with limited study places and during different semester. Okay, some subjects will only be offered in semester one and some only in semester two, some, some only in the summer semester. Okay, so you have to check the, uh, uh, um, the, 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 the semester offered by or the, by the subjects that you want to take, okay? So students are expected to follow the standard progression pattern. So what is the standard progression pattern? I will talk to you later. Okay, so as I have mentioned, uh, you need 69 credits plus three IC credits in order to graduate. And within these 69 credits, 15 credits are the GUR credits. GUR is the general university requirements. So for the GUR subjects, you have to, uh, it, it include some uh, language subject, okay? Two English language subject and one Chinese language subject. And you also have to uh, uh, take some car subject. Okay, C-A-R, C-A-R, car, doesn't mean the vehicles, okay, but cluster area requirements, okay? So I will introduce what is C-A-R subject. Okay, so 15 G-U-R subject and 54 D-S-R. D-S-R is the discipline specific requirements. So about the building services engineering. You have to take some mathematics subjects. You have to take some thermal fluid subject, electrical fundamentals, and then the thermodynamics, air conditioning, and the plumbing and drainage. So all these are the subjects related to building services, related to our discipline. Okay, so these subjects are called the DSR. Okay, so most of the DSR subject will be offered by BSG department, all right? Okay, and as I have mentioned, the three credits under uh, the IC, okay, IC training, IC training credits. Okay, so GUR, uh, to achieve the common aim of polio study programs, which is the development of intellectual skills and powers, students should acquire language and communication skills and expand their intellectual capacity beyond the discipline domain. So in summary, the GUR requirements is about the language, communication, and some other interests or, or, or uh, um, some, some, some other knowledge, okay, uh, apart from your own discipline. So for the 15 GUR, it include two language subjects, okay? Do you remember? Each subject usually take three credits. So six credits mean two subjects, okay? Two English uh, language subjects, and one Chinese language subjects, 
and two other cluster area requirement subject. Um, I mentioned car subjects, okay, car subjects. So for these two car subjects, you may select the subjects that you are interested, which is focus maybe on human nature, relation and development, maybe on uh, in community, organization, globalization, or maybe about history, okay, you are studying engineering, but maybe you're interested in history, then you may take a car subject about history, okay, or maybe science, technology, and environment, all right? So these car subjects is like uh, a subject that you're interested in, but it is not about building services engineering, okay? So they are the car subjects. So not really related to your discipline, but the university want you to have a uh, all-round personality, all-round knowledge. So you may select two subjects uh, not related to BSD, all right? And among the six credits, minimum three credits have to be on subjects designated as China related. So when you select a car subject, you should be able to see which subject is, car, uh, is China related, which one is not, okay? For the DSR, discipline specific requirements. So they are the subjects aimed at developing students discipline specific knowledge. So really about BSD, building services engineering. Okay, the air conditioning, the fire services, the plumbing and drainage, the electrical engineering, the lighting and others, okay? Um, prerequisite, prerequisite. Uh, this may be a new word to you. So prerequisites for individual subjects are required to ensure students taking a particular subject already have the fundamental knowledge required for studying that subject. So the meaning of prerequisite is that before you study, for example, before you study this subject, system design two, you have to pass the subject system design one. Logical, right? Reasonable, right? Okay, so if you fail the system design one, then you cannot achieve the prerequisite requirement for system design two. So you cannot take the system design two, all right? You have to retake the subject and then pass, get a pass, then you can study the system design two. This is the prerequisite requirement, all right? So system design one is the prerequisite subject of system design two. Okay, so for the higher diploma program, different subjects have different prerequisite requirement. That's why it is very, very important to follow the uh, recommended uh, study pattern, which is this one. Okay, this is the standard progression pattern. Okay, so you are highly recommended to follow this pattern in your two years of study, okay? So you may find what are these arrows, what are these colors mean? So here, when you see these uh, arrow on the left-hand side of uh, the rectangular box of one subject, it means that this subject, system design one, have three prerequisite subjects. Okay, so it means that in order to study system design one, you have to get a pass of these subjects. Okay, and in order to study system design two, you need to get a pass of this subject, yellow color, that is this one. Okay, uh, maybe it's a little bit complicated, so let's take a look. Uh, I can explain to you one by one. Okay, for year one, semester one. Uh, so first of all, for the high diploma program, it is a two year program, okay? And five semester. In your year one, you have semester one, that is from September to around December. And then semester two, around January to April. 
and then summer semester around May to July. Okay, and then you have a short summer holiday. And next year, year two, you have semester one and semester two. So if you pass all the subjects, you will be able to graduate. Okay, so this is the, uh, these are the five semester that you are going to pass through. So in semester one, according to the standard progression pattern, you should study one language subject, you should take one car subject, and then these one, two, three are the DSR subject, the subjects related to our discipline, the BSD. Okay, so thermal fluids, electrical fundamentals, and basic mathematics one. These are the three DSR subjects that you will take starting next week. Okay, and two other subjects are the IC subjects. Okay, so these two IC subjects will be about the construction drawing and the industrial safety. And these two IC subjects will have only one credits. Okay, only one credit for each IC subject. Okay, so it means that, um, so these two subjects are also important, but not really as important as the three, these three subjects. Okay, because they have more credits, three credits, three credits, and for these two IC subjects, only one credit. But you still need to get a pass, okay? And, and of course, the higher grade, the higher the grade, the better. Okay, so for the thermal fluids, it is a very, very important subject because thermal fluid is the prerequisite subject of four other subjects. You can see there are four arrows here. If you fail the thermal fluid, then you will not be able to study this one, two, three, four subject. Can you see my mouse here? Can you see it? Okay, so thermal fluid is the prerequisite subject of the thermodynamics and heat transfer and plumbing and drainage in the semester two and also the prerequisite subject for air conditioning one in summer semester and also the prerequisite subject for the fire surfaces subject in year two semester one. Okay. And for electrical fundamentals, it is the prerequisite subject for electrical installations one. All right, so these two are very important subject. You have to work hard, spend more time on the study, and then get a pass, okay? And, and um, not just get a pass, okay? The higher, once again, the higher the grade, the better, right? Okay, and for the mathematics, Basic Mathematics 1 is the prerequisite subject for Basic Mathematics 2, okay? So um, if you fail this uh, Mathematics 1, then you will not be able to study Basic Mathematics 2. You have to retake the subject, retake Basic Mathematics 1, okay? If you fail Thermal Fluid, then you have to retake this subject next year not in the semester two, because this subject, thermal fluid, will not be offered in semester two, okay? Very important. Thermal fluids will only be offered in semester one. So it means that if you fail thermal fluid in year one, semester one, then you have to retake this subject in year two, semester one, okay? So in this way, uh, you may delay your graduation, all right? Okay, so this is the uh, subjects that you are recommended to study in semester one. So I think, uh, uh, except the CAR subject, this C-A-R subject, all these subjects have been pre-assigned to your subject registration. Okay, so you have to go to the AR, is that AR system? For the subject, registr uh, subject registration, you have to register one car subject. Okay, one car subject that you're interested in. 
okay? Of course, it is not a must, okay? Not a must to register the car subject in this semester. You may register in the next semester or in the summer semester, okay? So uh, the most important is the color, okay? Is the subjects highlighted with colors, the BSD, AMA, BSD subjects, okay? So you are highly, highly, highly recommended to follow this standard progression pattern. Okay, for the BSD and AMA subject. Okay, AMA is the mathematics uh, department. Okay. Okay, and then semester two, you will study these subject and the summer semester, and then next year, these subject. So if all pass, you will be able to attain 69 credits plus the IC training. Then you will be able to graduate. Okay, so up to here, any problem? If you want, you can just uh, um, switch on your microphone and ask me. You can, you can just ask me in Chinese, and, uh, but I will answer in English, okay? Or, or you can type your question in the chat box. Any question about the study, the, the progression pattern? Uh, I want to ask that I see framing is give off bar by mm. in the flow center or we need to go outside to find inter? Mm. Uh, no, no need, no need. The IC training will be offered by the industrial center. So they are just some subject you have to attend. Okay, so you don't need to go out to find a job and, and, uh, and to satisfy some kind of uh, work-related uh, requirements. No, for the high diploma program, we don't have that um, kind of requirements. Okay, but for degree program, they have. For degree program, they have a WID, which is work, a work integrated education. They have to fulfill around uh, how, how, how long? 10 weeks of uh, uh, working experience in order to graduate. But, but for the higher diploma, we don't have that requirements. Okay, for the IC training, just go to the IC center and then you have to attain certain training, maybe training about drawing, training about safety, training about uh, the electrical wiring or maybe the, the, the air duct or maybe um, the plumbing and drainage, then you can get a pass and uh, attain those credits. Okay. So any other questions? So once again, um, following the study pattern, uh, this standard progression pattern is very important. Okay, so uh, I think these subjects, the BSD 1201 thermal fluid, the BSD 1101 electrical fundamentals and the AMA 1110 basic mathematics have been pre-assigned to your account already. Okay, you can check, okay? Um, and make sure that you attain the lectures and the tutorials, okay? So I can say that if you didn't attend the lectures and the tutorials, it is very difficult for you to get a pass, okay? Seriously, okay? So you have to attain all the lessons. Don't skip class, okay? I, 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 I will um, sincerely ask you to attend all the lessons, all right? Okay, so any questions about the the study pattern. Okay, then we will go to next slide. Okay, assessment. So how will be your grade, your uh, performance be assessed? All subjects will be assessed by a combination of coursework and examination or by continuous assessment as deemed in the curriculum, sum curriculum summary table. Okay. Um, so first of all, what is curriculum? Maybe I can show you a link. Okay, um, this is the website of Building Services Engineering Department. And here 
academic program, okay? Under academic program, read more. When you click, you can see BSG subject list. Okay, so click BSG subject list. So for example, I mentioned one subject that you are going to take is the thermal fluid, BSG 1201. So when you click, you can see this is the subject description form of thermal fluid. Okay, three credits and what is the subject, what are the subject learning outcome, the syllabus and the uh, assessment. Okay, so the assessment will consist of in-class test, examination, and also lab experiments and reports. Okay, so these are some, uh, um, uh, this is one way you can know uh, what are the assessment component of a subject. And different subject may have different assessment method. Okay, this subject, okay, 20% in-class test. Maybe for another subject, 30% for the in-class test. Okay. Okay, coursework. Coursework means continuous assessment. Maybe test, maybe assignment, maybe lab reports, seminar, presentation, etc. And examination, usually it is a written examination. All right. Uh, we used to have the in-campus examination. So all students come back to a examination hall and then conduct the uh, closed book examination. Uh, but for this semester, uh, for this semester we have the coronavirus. So uh, for some subjects, we will use online uh, examination or the take home examination, take home assignment. Uh, you will be um, notified by the subject examiner. Okay, subject examiners uh, is the staff responsible for that subject. Okay, so he or she will determine uh, what is the assessment components and then uh, he or she will do the administration of the um, of the subject grading. Um, um, so so he, he or she is the one to determine uh, what to teach you, how to assess you, and what is your grade, okay? Um, assessment method. So grade point for uh, the overall grade of a subject will be determined based on the grade point. And a grade point would be calculated by this equation, Okay, so GP, grade point for the examination and GP for the coursework and A and B is the percentage. So maybe 60% based on examination and then 40% based on coursework. And the GP will be a number range from zero to four point something. Okay, so if you get an F, then the grade point will be zero. Okay, if you get an A plus, then the grade point will be 4.7, okay? If I remember it wrong, uh, if, I, if I remember it right, uh, for A plus, the grade point will be 4.7, okay? And be careful. So when you see this symbol, exclamation mark, rectangle, then it means that's something you have to be careful, okay? If a student obtains a grade F in the examination component, then the subject grade will also be F, irrespective of the grade of the coursework component. So even in the coursework, in the test, in the seminar, or in an assignment, you get a very, very good grade, A+, plus, but you fail in the examination, then you will fail the whole subject, okay? So be careful. Uh, oh, sorry, A plus has a grade point of 4.3, okay, not 4.7, 4.3, okay. Um, so this is the grade to grade point system. This is the latest, okay, we used to have another system. So starting this year, this is the latest, uh, the new grade to grade point system. Okay, so A plus 4.3, A4 and so on, and um, C minus 1.7, D plus 1.3, D1F is zero. 
okay? So when I say you need to get a pass, it doesn't mean that you should get at least D, okay? Actually, you should get at least C minus, okay? So you should get grades of C minus or above, otherwise you may fall into academic probation, okay? So when, um, so a pass grade is D or above, okay? So for the examination, for the coursework, for one subject, when you get a grade of D or above, you get a pass, but it is not a satisfactory grade, okay? D or D plus is not satisfactory, okay? So don't aim at getting D or D plus. You should aim at getting C minus or above. Okay, because if your grade is D plus or D, then the GPA, your GPA may be lower than 1.7. And when your GPA is lower than 1.7, you will be in trouble. Okay, so this is the equation for calculating your GPA. Uh, I think we don't have enough time to explain all the calculations, um, but it is just simple mathematics, okay? So I will just leave it to you. And this is an example, okay? So for example, one student studied these uh, subjects in his year one, semester one. And these are the credits values. He get me a B minus, B, A minus, and so on, and these are the grade point, then he will get a GPA of 3.1, okay? Good grade, good GPA, 3.1. And apart from GPA, we also have semester GPA, okay? There are different kinds of GPA, semester GPA, cumulative GPA, weighted GPA, awarded GPA. Okay, but for you, I think you only need to tell, uh, I think you only need to care about semester GPA and cumulative GPA, okay? Semester GPA is the GPA of that particular semester. And when we say GPA, it means the cumulative GPA, okay? So for example, in the year two, semester two, semester GPA is only for that particular semester. But for the GPA, is a cumulative GPA from year one, semester one, semester two, summer semester, and then year two, semester two. Okay. Uh, this is another example. I think I would just skip it. We are running out of time. Okay. Uh, requirements for progression. Okay, very important. Okay, very, very important. In order to progress, to the next semester, to the next year. Uh, don't fall into these two, uh, these four categories, okay? Don't fall into these four categories. A student will be able to progress unless he falls within the following categories, each of which may be regarded as ground for deregistration from the program. Okay, the first one, the student has reached the final year of the normal period of registration. Okay, unless approval has been given for extension. So two years, you should graduate within two years. If you fail some of the subjects so that you need to retake on the next year, then you have to make an application to our department head, okay? And number two, the student has reached maximum number of retakes, which is two times uh, for a failed compulsory subject. So if you fail a subject, you have to retake. And if you fail again, you need to retake once again, but you can only retake twice, okay? You can only retake twice. If in the second retake you fail, then you will be deregistered, okay? So very importantly, study, okay? You have to study in order to pass and to get a higher GPA. Okay, uh, students GPA lower than 1.7 for two consecutive semester and his semester GPA in the second semester is also lower than 1.7. Once again, you will be deregistered. Or when your GPA is lower than 1.7 for three consecutive semester, 
then you will be deregistered. Okay, for the third and fourth category, I will use this example. Okay, so this student get a semester GPA uh, of 1.65, okay, lower than 1.7. And then in the second semester, semester GPA lower than 1.7 and GPA also lower than 1.7. So two consecutive semester with GPA lower than 1.7 and semester GPA also lower than 1.7, then he will be deregistered. Okay, and this student is more lucky, okay? In the second semester, his GPA is higher than 1.7, just a little bit higher, okay? So two consecutive semester with GPA lower than two, but the semester GPA is higher, uh, not to 1.7, but the semester GPA is higher than 1.7. Then no deregister, but he will be put on academic probation. When you are put into academic probation, the maximum credits, that you can study in one semester will be 15, okay? Not 21, but 15. I think I have to go faster, okay? Uh, and if you have three consecutive semester having GPA lower than 1.7, then you will be deregistered. Okay, retaking. Um, you can only retake twice. And when you pass a subject, you cannot retake. Okay, only when you fail a subject, then you can retake, okay? So if you have attained 69 credits and you have complete all the IC training and the GPA is higher than 1.7, then you can graduate, okay? Uh, one of your classmates asked, are the IC training held online or in the IC? Um, I think for the drawings, it will be online. Um, part of it will be online, but for the um, but but for the hands-on IC training and for the safety, it should be held in the IC center. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, their 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 their, uh, their logistic. Uh, I think the uh, subject lecturers of the IC subjects will be exp uh, will explain to you later. Okay, learning, a uh, teaching and learning platform. We are using Blackboard, okay? Blackboard Learn at PolyU. So I can show you what is Blackboard. Uh, I have logged in, so maybe let me log out. Okay, so this is uh, learn.polyu.edu.hk and all of you will have an account. So you can log in to the PolyU, uh, to the Blackboard Learn at PolyU. And then when you log in, you can see the subjects that you have registered. Okay, so for example, uh, which subject? Uh, maybe Uh, maybe for uh, this subject, okay, so just a random subject. Uh, you can find the teaching materials maybe in the content page. So like here, uh, I have posted the teaching materials of lecture one uh, and then for lecture two and some videos. So these are the teaching materials. And I have also put the teaching scheme here, okay? So before you attend the lectures, make sure that you can read, uh, you can find the teaching scheme, okay? Teaching scheme is a very, very important document. Um, you need to attend the lecture or a tutorial at, uh, according to the teaching scheme, okay? So you need to check the Blackboard, okay? Check the Blackboard and then to see what materials have been posted or maybe what are the announcement and what or the assessment uh, or, or, or some other materials that you can refer to, all right? Okay, so this is an example of the teaching scheme and this is me, okay, Hilda Zheng Hiu Dan. And uh, my telephone number, my email, and if you want to have a copy of 
this document, you can use this QR code. I have uh, uploaded this document to my OneDrive so that you can have a copy. All right. Okay, so any problem? Any question? Okay, so I will stop the recording.